All right, so I think we should just go ahead and get started, Rich, right? Are we waiting on Josh or? Yeah, yeah. He, oh, wait, he... I see Josh. Just kidding. He's right there. Hey, Josh. Hi, guys. Oh, you do see him. All right. Sorry about that. I didn't have the password. Ah, the password again. That's going to be a thing, huh? Well, Josh, we did put out the uh, the preface for the meeting tonight that tonight is our first completely remote dry run. The advisory committee did execute one internally to ensure the functionality of the software worked, but this is the first one where everybody's going to be participating in a posted meeting as well as it having it be open for resident participation. So uh, everybody's kind of bearing with us at this point and uh, appreciate the patience as we work through some of these procedural kinks. No problem. All right, let me just see if our resident was able to get in and then we could probably go ahead and get started. So I'm not going to go through the full script of everything that we sent out. That's something that we're going to try to iron out and make work best for us going into uh, the first select board meeting tomorrow. Uh, the goal is to be able to adhere to all the standards associated to operating in a fully remote nature while also giving residents the ability to identify who's speaking at all times and who's participating in these meetings. Like we said before, it's important that everybody join via video so that we can see who's talking and when they're talking. But uh, at different points during the meeting, whenever somebody is speaking, we just ask that you say your name before you start speaking. Um, and then in an effort to try to keep from people speaking over each other, uh, you can identify that you'd like to speak, and then somebody will yield over to you to be able to talk. So, for instance, if Rich and I are having an argument, and Rich says, Kevin, I want to say something about that, we'll say, Rich, it's your floor. Rich will speak, and when he's done, he'll say, I yield back. Um, we'll try to operate like that, see how that works. If that gets too complicated, we'll figure out something else to do. You can just raise your hand. That makes... We well, could raise actually, your yeah, hand. There's actually a raise your hand button. Oh, there you go. I just pressed mine. If you can see on my there screen. There you go. I see that I mean, Susan raised her hand. We could do I'd that like, as well. I'd like to speak next. <laughs> and then you can just click it again to take it off. We, we did this for our advisory meeting the other night. So. It looks like you could, there's a setting that'll focus on the speaker too. Yes. That's, that's what happens to me. If you speak, I pop up, you pop up on my screen. I don't know if it does that for everyone. There you go. Yes, Aaron. Uh, I was just testing the raise your hand button. There's the raise your hand button. If you okay. have, oh, if there it is. I see it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if everybody has a good idea of the basis of how we're going to operate, uh, I think we should just quickly do a quick roll call of who's here. So um, I'll the best way to do that will probably be for me to identify each person and you just say here if I say your name. Everybody ready? Ready. Eileen Siegel. Here. Aaron Hunt. Here. Susan Klein. Here. Ed Haddad. Here. That's not Jake Dubeck. All right. I, I'm on my own computer, but Jake <laughs> certainly used Zoom on this computer. Sometime recently. Janine, there we go. She's here. Devin Howe? Here. All right, and that does it for our committee members. Employees, Rich McCarthy? Here. All right, that does it for our employees. And distinguished guests, Josh Fiala? Here. Very good. All right, so that is our full inventory of everybody who's joining. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin Kalka here. Uh, so that's everybody that's joining us tonight. So Rich, you want to take us through our agenda to start? Sure. I'm gonna, so, so bear with me. I'm a little uh, learning this. Uh, jumping back and forth. We're all learning tonight. Uh, so one of the. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. All right. Uh, agenda. 
Hold on a second, it's popping up. Somewhere. Okay, so the the first item on the agenda is discuss and potential vote to designate someone as the chairperson for the committee. Uh, as I put out in the email, Kevin is the hosting tonight. Doesn't necessarily mean he would be the chairperson going for, forward for the B1 committee. Um, but I thought based on some of our cast meetings and going forward, I think it would be better to, to have a chairperson to, to run the meeting going forward. Um, so that's the first item on the agenda to discuss. Rich, you just want to go through the whole agenda so we can get the whole thing laid out and then start knocking it out? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Um, second item is discuss comments from the February 12th advisory board meeting to uh, from MAPC. Uh, next item on the agenda is prepare a list of concerns and criticisms so far. Um, review and discuss and vote the B1 executive summary to post. Uh, review and vote the B1 committee schedule and next steps. And then looking at next potential meeting going forward. Very good. Thank you, sir. All right. So our first item is to discuss a chair. Um, I think Rich kind of touched on it. Um, as we've worked our way through some of the organizational and structural aspects of the committee, it's become apparent that there could be some added benefit to having someone who is in charge of directing the course of the meeting, identifying people to speak both within the committee and in the audience, and just adding a certain aspect of a single point of contact for ensuring that these meetings are running smoothly and efficiently. Um, I agree with Rich. I think that there would be an added benefit to having an individual um, fulfill that role, um, but I'm open to the committee's feelings about anybody they feel would uh, like to serve in that capacity. Ed, was that a hand? No, count, no. <laughs> it was an itch. It was an itch. <laughs> <laughs> so is there, uh, how about we start this way first, Kevin? Does the committee think there's a need for that type of person, a chairperson? Sounds beneficial. It sounds like maybe I, I thought that Rich and maybe Josh owned that, but I maybe that was in the past, or or I just assumed that. Well, I think uh, I think that's a good point. I think probably that's kind of how we operated before, but I think just going through the process we've gone so far, and just thinking in terms of when you know there's other board meetings or committees there usually is a chairperson so that way it kind of directs the conversation a little bit so you know i might say something and then you know pause and somebody else can speak i think it just probably is a necessary thing to have at this point and the reason secondarily so for example if somebody if I'm dwelling on too long at a particular point, the chair can say, okay, you know, let's move on and so forth. There might be somebody else. I think it just, it just seems to, to work better when you have somebody to steer in the ship. Yeah. Not a staff person necessarily. I agree. So are you volunteering, Rich, or are you saying you shouldn't be uh, the chair? No, 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 I'm not volunteering. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think uh, there should be a person from the committee. And that, so for example, I'm sure like other boards and committees, when, when we're working on the agenda for, I'll just say for the plan board, for example, the zoning board, you know, I converse back and forth with the chairperson and okay, this is what we're going to have on, on the agenda for discussion. So it's a sounding board. For myself and Josh to be able to say, okay, this is the topic of discussion, things that we should tackle, not tackle. And then that chairperson provides that feedback from the committee perspective and then gives a little bit more direction, I think. 
Eileen, what are your thoughts? Uh, I agree. I think there should be a chairperson. Yes. Very good. Janine, your thoughts? I agree that there should be a chairperson. Good. Aaron? I'm in agreement. Devin? I agree. Who would like to do it? Yeah, that's the next question. Susan, any objections? No. Um, on advisory board, we set it up where the person who's been on the committee the longest gets right of first refusal. And if they don't want it, then it goes down the chain in seniority, basically. So if, not sure. That was a great way to get yourself to the back of the line, Susan. <laughs> you saw that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think um, okay, well, go ahead, Rich. Yeah, I was going to say, with the exception of Susan, all the rest of you arrived on the committee at the same time. So. I, I, I'm going to nom nominate Aaron, as he seems to be, as not, probably one of the most knowledgeable of the originals uh, of, of the process and what we're doing and the, and the bylaws themselves. So I'm going to nominate uh, Aaron. Very good. We have our first nomination. Does anybody have another nomination like that, that they'd like to put in? Looks like Aaron's got a lot of fans. I can't see his picture yet. There he is. Well, how about you, Kevin? Would you be interested in being chairperson? As much as I love being chair people of things, um, I, I do have another commitment that it, it takes up a lot of my time. So if there was nobody else who wanted to take on the role, I, I would absolutely fulfill it so that we could, you know, have the benefit of having that single point of contact. But I agree with that. I think that Aaron's professional experience lends itself well uh, to being able to execute some of the more technical functions of the discussions we go through. Um, and plus, I think he's got a great passion uh, for the things that we're talking about. And uh, that really comes out in the way that these meetings are run. So I would agree with that. And I would second that nomination for Aaron. So do we vote now? Do we have any other nominations? I don't think, do we does have another have nomination or? Does he have to accept the nomination? <laughs> <laughs> he does not have to. He does not have to. So, Aaron, if you'd like to uh, voice an opposition, you're more than welcome to do so. I thought for sure if I just sat here in the dark long enough, <laughs> you guys would forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I can't even turn the light off. <laughs> no, I, um, I'd be happy to do it. Good. Unanimous. There we go. So for the sake of procedural testing, let's uh, do a roll call vote uh, for Erin to be chair. Um, Eileen Siegel. Yes. Erin Hunt. Yes. Do I need oh, to abstain? <laughs> no, you can vote for yourself. I'll abstain. Abstaining for himself. Susan Klein. Aye. <laughs> Janine Dubeck. Yes, I vote for Aaron. Devin Howe. Yes. Ed Haddad. Yes. Kevin Calcutt. Yes, it is unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Hunt. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay. Great. I'm transferring over ownership of the meeting and uh, good luck. <laughs> oh, I don't think Aaron meant immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about how we handle meeting management remotely and all that kind of fun stuff later. But uh, for the purposes of having a single point of contact, Aaron's our guy. Thank you, Aaron. All right. All right. Rich, what do we have next? So the next item on the agenda is discussion from the February 12th advisory board meeting and the presentation from MAPC. I think probably maybe uh, and Josh correct me if I'm wrong but how I'm going to defer to Josh and then what do you th is there anything that you want to document why that maybe lead the discussion that you want people to look at yeah thanks Rich this is Josh Fiala MAPC uh, I think that what I would do is potentially combine this 
agenda item with the next, which is prepare a list of concerns and criticisms so far. <coughs> Draw your attention to too many documents open. Um, there's a document called Norfolk B1 Issues List Draft 3 3 2020, if you have that. So, in, in reflecting on our, uh, I thought, very productive and uh, ranging discussion that we had at the uh, advisory committee that evening. Uh, that the next, one of the next uh, best steps to take would be to uh, list the concerns uh, that were raised at that meeting and at all the uh, previous meetings which had occurred throughout the fall um, and uh, I guess culminated and were reiterated in that conversation with the advisory board. Um, I think uh, then to move forward effectively, we should uh, list those and then uh, brainstorm together uh, and populate a list of possible solutions to each of those concerns that have been raised. And then we can spend in the next meeting or two as a committee discussing uh, the merits, the pros and cons of each of those possible approaches to addressing concerns, criticisms, or uh, additional strengthening of the zoning recommendations which have been put forward. So uh, the document which I have, which is dated the 3rd of March, is not a uh, final document or a comprehensive list. I need to actually myself go back through uh, quite a few meeting notes uh, and make this a more robust document. But just to uh, start, I was uh, reflecting on the conversations we had in that meeting um, and starting to list some of those concerns, which included concerns for how and where the zoning actually applies. So is it the entire district? Is it one sub-district or the other? Is there another way that we could think about the geography of the recommendations? Um, so those are all, let's say that's a, a concern, but then there are a number of ways to address that concern. So I'm illustrating sort of what the approach is here. Uh, and then there are, there are concerns for specific zoning characteristics which have been raised. For example, why change the maximum building footprint? So what are the solutions to explore there? And one of the solutions, so they could be solutions which are changing to the zoning recommendations themselves, or a possible solution could be, no, we think that the zoning recommendation is actually a sound recommendation. So the solution might be to further expand our explanation and education and outreach about what, why it is we think that's necessary to do. Uh, so that's a possible solution. They don't all have to result in changes to what was previously recommended. But I think some of them will result in changes to what was previously recommended, given where we, at, where we are at in terms of the uh, community's response to the recommendations to date. So uh, I, I guess that I'll just maybe leave it there. I don't think we need to necessarily go through the content of the list in detail at this point, but just wanted to lay out this methodology and approach and get the response from the committee to see if this seemed like a fruitful uh, path to go down before I went, went down that path in earnest. Well, this is, this is Aaron, I'll jump in. Um, one, I think it's a great idea, Josh. Um, two, I'm not sure it's your task to be doing it. And three, did Rich, if I'm not mistaken, you you attached the B1 draft discussion document to one of your emails. I did, and I would argue that that that's a draft that I put together in an effort to do exactly what Josh is describing. Um, only I tried to tie it to the actual. Um, planning items that we've been discussing. So I don't know if ever, I don't know if everyone has that open, but it would be a way, it's a way to, to tie all of the discussion points, which is why it's titled discussion to uh, the actual 
um, zoning regulations and points that we're discussing. Uh, to a certain extent, I tried to tried to recreate the history of our conversations. I'm sure I didn't get everything, uh, but I'd be happy to one, well, assuming folks agree with me that one, it's a good idea, two, it's not really Josh's responsibility to be our um, admin assistant. And uh, three, the, the format is reasonable. I'm, I'm happy to expand upon it or we had talked at one point in time, perhaps each person on the board would take responsibility for one item, right? So maybe, maybe that's how we deal with these items. Everybody gets one item and they, they track the own questions, responses, and history for each item as we go over the next meetings. That was a, was a lot to dump, so I'll stop talking. Anyone else input, feedback, opinion? I guess my only concern is that I think dividing up some of that material, I mean, I have no experience with any of this stuff. So I, I'm not sure that I would be helpful in taking on part of this, depending on what you guys mean by dividing it up and asking us to work on it. Can you be more specific or expand on that for me? I can, Aaron speaking again. Um, and I think Susan could probably help with this, but it's, it's the idea that, that she mentioned that the advisory board, when they go to make their recommendations for a town meeting, you know, one person isn't responsible for the entire agenda. What they do is, is they, they break up all of the the different agenda items and, e and they, you know, each one of them is responsible for, for representing two or three items. And, you know, whether they are in support of it or not, it's more of an administrative role uh, to sort of uh, divide and conquer. Correct. What, for example, um, what I mean by, what I meant by that originally was when we're preparing to go to town meeting or to present to any of the boards, once we've come we figured out what changes we're going to make and we write it is if there are raised questions about parking for example then one person on this committee could be in charge of answering the questions about parking you know validating our reasoning behind it explaining how we got to the solution explaining why we think it should be reduced or not reduced or how whatever it may be once we've decided on it how we came to that decision and what research we have to back it up so it wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't necessarily need to know how to pave a road for example or what any of the building intricacies what you would need to know is how the board came up with this plan, why they came up with this plan, and what your research showed when you researched for it. That way, one person, this is a really long plan. I mean, these seven articles will take hours to present, you know, if we keep them at seven, regardless, they're gonna take a lot of time to present. And that's gonna be a lot of questions for one person to answer and a lot of information for them to have in their head at once. Whereas if you split it up and say, for example, Ed only had to understand and be um, able to answer questions on the building height, then, then that's a little bit easier on say Aaron. He doesn't have to be able to answer every single question that is raised. Um, you would have to do some research. I, I wouldn't say you could go into this knowing nothing, but I think the research would probably be more um, what were the town codes before? What are the town codes now? How, are, how we came to the decision of changing them and what other towns have done this and how is it affect, you know, if someone says, how is the height change going to affect, the, you know, the area of Norfolk? You would want to be able to say, well, it's going to raise the building height. It's going to lower the building height. It's going to make it look like this. Here's an example of a building that's this high. Because I think a lot of times people want a visual thing that they can attach to. Not everyone understands the difference between 47 feet and 53 feet. But if you could say, hey, 
building X on Main Street is 47 and building Y on, you know, 115 is 53, that's the difference. Um, I think that's more the um, avenue that you would need to have as far as research into your specific topic. So and, I'll, and Aaron speaking again, I'll add to that, that I think the, the point of that discussion document that I referenced is to record all of the conversation of the committee so that, you know, each one of us isn't doing their own homework in, on their own little island. Right? They, have a, they have the outline of the committee and the history of the discussion in front of them recorded. And, and you know, of course, they're, they're willing to add and interpret as, as their individual needs uh, so lead them. But um, that, that, that's the goal behind this, uh, this discussion document. And uh, real quick, Josh, just I, I, I didn't mean to totally divert the conversation away from your question, but I mean, is, is what I'm presenting consistent with what your question is or was? Yes, I think so. I think that what, as, I, as we're thinking through this and talking about ways to organize this massive amount of information and, and a, de a decision tree, which is resulting from these conversations, um, I, the thing that I keep returning to is a way that's a, a good way to organize this type of information would be in some sort of form of matrix uh, where we could put together uh, a, a series of uh, consistent columns that deal with sort of what the uh, original recommendation was, what have we heard, and then what are different approaches which would respond to what we've heard, and then ultimately what are the trade-offs with those responses or, and then, and then probably like, where did we end up in the end would be one of the final columns. And that would allow both us to track these conversations and to understand what, you know, the conversations that have already occurred, but also to track our conversations moving forward. And then it would be a document which could be shared uh, occasionally as it's updated and current to other members of the public so they can see that we are in fact trying in earnest to be responsive to what we've heard and to do that in a very comprehensive holistic way. So I can, I can think of a, I can draft up a um, matrix in that manner and populate it with some of the information I've started. And then that might be a companion Aaron to the type of more narrative document that you're talking about. All right. So can I make a comment? Go ahead. Go ahead Ed. In, in just regard to what Josh just said, I just want to note that the February 12th meeting, I wouldn't say was a great representation of most of the people of the town speaking. I think we had a few individuals there who were very vocal and strong in their opinions. And I'm not discounting those, but I, I wouldn't say this was the whole town speaking. So I think we just have to be careful in what we're, we don't want the tail wagging the dog necessarily. If we think something is right based on what we've discussed, I think we have to pursue it rather than all of a sudden change, change course because one person doesn't like what we're doing. Yeah. Just to just Agreed, uh, and Josh, uh, did you get the documents that, that Rich sent out a day or so ago? I, yes, I believe I have those yeah. on the screen. Did, I don't know if, I, if everybody's had a chance to look at the executive summary document. The, this starts to do part of what Josh was saying as well, which is it talks about the, the, um, the zoning article. It talks about the existing language, what we as a committee had previously proposed, and then an amended recommendation. Right. So um, I think what Josh is trying to say is, is all of these words that exist in these documents, it might be more easily understood if you can somehow put it into a matrix. And just to just to follow on, Josh speaking again to Ed, uh, that comment. I, I think that the matrix is a tool to make sure that we're being very conscious of the decisions we're making and comprehensive. But it's not to say that the matrix is the matrix would be set up so that we have to change every single recommendation that was previously. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just making that observation that we didn't have a really good population at that meeting. It was very relatively small. It was very vocal, no question about it, but it was still small. I think it's good. I think it's good at this point anyway to confirm 
if we do believe one of the recommendations we put forward previously is still a good recommendation to confirm that as a group and then to bolster the justification for why we think that's a good good recommendation. Yeah, agreed. Well, I think the problem was is that what was put forth um, last year wouldn't have passed a town meeting. So it's, you know, can only do it, we can only do it once. So if you're going to leave it the way it is, there's a really good chance it's not going to pass. And that's not just from some of the boards. I mean, that's feedback from town. That's people who were planning to show up and, and not and make sure that it was voted down. That from what I understand, it was even felt that way from different boards that the B1 committee presented to, like the select board and um, the board of health and different things like that. The feedback was that they weren't happy with the way that it was. Now, different people were upset about different things because like I've said in previous um, committee on in previous meetings in this committee is you're never going to make everybody happy and the goal isn't to make Kevin happy and it isn't to make Susan happy and it isn't to make Ed happy it's to make the biggest impact on the town that's successful for everyone you're never going to please everyone but you have to try to do what is best for overall for the town and I'm not sure you're going to find a lot of people who think that a ton of apartment buildings are what's best for the town. So we have to make sure that that is well stated in our changes to the zoning um, bylaws, as well as we can't really fully get town participation and town input until there's a report available. And from what I understand, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I obviously don't see everything. The, I know the report, this report is wrong, and or, or we feel like we're going to make changes to it, so we haven't wanted to put it out. But until we put a report out that we do, we are going to back, we can't expect town the town people to be involved. There's no report for them to look at. They don't know whether they're supporting or not supporting it because they haven't seen the information on it. Um, un unless that's been put up somewhere on a website that I wasn't made aware of. Susan, let me jump in there. Rich, the, the MAPC report is public, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. It's, on, it's, on the, it's on the town website, Susan. Okay. Um, so the and let's, I, I, real quick, I just want to mention some process, right? We, we had, we, we sketched out a calendar, right? Which also was one of the attachments that Rich uh, attached. And following the advisory board meeting, our plan was to go to have a public meeting, right? So to Ed's, to Ed's point, our plan was always to follow up the advisory board meeting with a public meeting and presentation of the MAPC report, right? Then we were going to collect all of the feedback on the MAPC report and begin our stretch run for making our recommendations for changes for the, for the fall town meeting, right? So, um, but I, I just want to be clear too, because I, you know, the report that, that Josh and his team put together is the MAPC's recommendations based on their study. It is not necessarily those consistent with the recommendations that this committee is going to make at the end, right? Mm -hmm. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but as Josh, Josh is joining us again to help us to get us to the finish line, but by no means is another report coming out. I mean, the report's been issued and I don't even know if it's gonna be edited at this point, is it? So let me, Rich, just jump in for a moment. So the report is the report from MAPC. The, the, the plan going forward is to take what was in the report and the recommendations and then come up with recommendations that the B1 committee will bring to town meeting. So this is kind of the step forward point right now that Josh was kind of alluding to that we're gonna we're cast in that, identify all the, the questions that were raised in the different pieces of the zoning recommendations that we had before the, the ones that were gonna be presented at the November town right. meeting. So, so in, in concept, Rich, again, to repeat is, you know, the MAPC finished their report, we presented it to the advisory group. Our next goal was to present it to the public we would have our pool for feedback. We could then begin modifying our recommendations, right? So our original schedule had the, had the public meeting happening in early March yes. and the committee meeting to follow up on the public meeting was actually supposed to be this meeting, right? So we're a little bit behind schedule already, obviously not helped by the current um, social environment that we're in, but 
Now that, that's something we should talk about, but, um, but I, I think the overall process to get us to the fall meeting is, as we sketched it out a couple of meetings ago, is still valid. Well, let me... oh, Sorry, right. it looks like Josh is raising his hand, actually. <laughs> yeah, was, I, I couldn't find the button. Sorry. <laughs> got Josh here. Um, I, I was thinking through this. I had, I hadn't actually seen the um, schedule. Now I'm, I'm looking through it now. Um, I, I mean, we at MAPC we do um, never want to shy away from a public meeting for sure. And, and I think community engagement is one of the things that is a hallmark of our work. However, um, I, I think that we know enough about the concerns and criticisms that have been raised since, um, say, last September, um, when the when the zoning recommendations were uh, had taken shape and were then uh, we were trying to modify them almost in real real time uh, to be responsive to the criticism we were hearing. Um, so I think rather than I'm not sure that a another meeting which discusses the now very outdated set of recommendations that we know people don't like that we know we also know the very specific reasons why they don't like it which we could populate an entire matrix with is what i was saying so i, I would actually prefer to um, delay that meeting that public meeting until as a committee we can start to turn the corner on reviewing those concerns understanding what our options are in terms of putting together a new package of recommendations, and then present that new package of recommendations at a public presentation, which we can then see if we've made enough change and difference in that to start to gain more support for those recommendations. I, I, I think that that would be a more productive sequence of meetings rather than going back out to the public. And, and I think at this point still, um, just probably continuing a sense of confusion and misunderstanding about where, where this process is and why these recommendations don't ever change. They're just, we keep showing up with the same ideas that everyone has shown us they don't like. So um, I, I put that forward for the committee to consider. Any thoughts out there on that? Need. I think that makes sense um, in part. I agree with Aaron that we just we need to keep moving forward. We came up with a plan. We seem to not be necessarily following the, the plan that we had set forth. But I, I do agree with Josh that I'm not sure it will be beneficial if we go and have a public meeting without doing some additional work first. and. Um, whatever form that takes, I think going through the executive summary that Aaron put together, um, I had sent some notes over to Rich a couple of weeks ago as well. And then stepping back and taking a look at all of that and seeing if we feel like we're addressing the concerns would be a good step to do before we bring it to another public meeting. I mean, all of these meetings are public, but before we invite additional participation. I'm not sure that we're ready for that yet. So a, a question to Rich or Kevin or maybe Josh. I, I mean, the report's public because it's posted on the website, but have, has anybody heard any feedback from the public on the report? Do we, is there a way that, like, can we tell from the website how many times it's been downloaded or Can you tell me where it's posted? I'm looking now and I, can't seem to find it. I've searched in the up, upper right hand corner for B1 and I've also searched for MP, MAPC, but all I can find is something from 2019. I'm not seeing where it's been posted recently. If anyone knows, just so well, I can. It is on the land. So if you go on the land use page. I'm on town of Norfolk. Right. So if you go to the land use department. Department. Land use page. OK. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
and we didn't post anything on Facebook okay. or anything like that, I don't believe. Okay, so it's this Norfolk Center District B1 final report? Yes. Okay, thank you. And, and how, was, how has the report been presented to the public? I mean, has there been an announcement? Is, is I guess that's a question to Rich. I don't know. I mean, we talked about it at the advisory meeting. Yeah, so this report was originally it came it it showed up on the uh, on the front page as what's new. It was a, a posting about the report being available when it was released, but then on what's new obviously it, it drops off, so it's not it's not what's new anymore. So it's it's on the um, so under what's new, there's a link to this page to review the report. So now, and if it was posted under what's new, it would also be automatically creating a Facebook post on the town of Norfolk Facebook page. And then, as in the, you know, as the, and then it slides down, obviously, what's new. So, um, and we certainly, So I guess if I might uh, somewhat go back to what Josh had mentioned, I think is somewhat of a good place to kind of organize. We did hear comments from a variety of different people relative to the recommendations, and there's some potential strategies to address each one of those points that I think we kind of need to work towards getting, which will then help us um, kind of focus where we're headed with a lot of this. So for example, you know, pick up, not to be on the parking, but um, we heard a lot about parking. So I feel like the, we need to kind of, as Josh mentioned, we list, there's some overlap between the list that you have, Aaron, and then the list that, list of concerns that Josh has and there's a few uh, that I listed as well. Maybe just, Maybe the matrix is the way to land them all together so they line up. So we have cast that net. We have identified everything that's the commentary that we've seen so far relative to the um, things, stress more the negative at the moment, but the negative points, and then discuss strateg strategies to address them or not address them. So for example, the parking, there's, there's a few different ways to handle that. Um, that we could explore the district itself if you if you look at the document that uh, that uh, Josh had set out I said similarly you know maybe the b1 core is a different b1 core than what exists today and that that's where some of the higher intensity uses go going forward and then there's the outer core um, the issue came up through the public hearing about, um, you know, some property on Boardman Street that was raised about whether it should be in the in the B1 zone or not. Well, if for, if one of the directions is to create a more concentrated core, and there's the outer core, then some of these changes may not necessarily be applicable to them, which, again, people might look at them a little bit differently than being concerned, or the property may be taken out of the district. So kind of feel like we need to work our way towards exploring some potential. I think some of those are, um, z are zoned in the B1 district that may not, if you just look at them logically, they may not make sense to necessarily be in the B1 district. Like something that's, you know, on a, the residential side of Boardman may not make sense to be in that area if we're discussing making changes to things that would clearly be either more apartment driven or more commercial driven. Mm -hmm. um, what would be on that side of Boardman behind um, Boardman in Maine is where they're talking about that would be more residential. So that should probably come out of the B1 area. I'm sure there's, that's the only one I remember someone bringing up specifically, but I'm sure there are other pieces that are technically in the B1 or in the outer B1 or in the core of the B1 that shouldn't necessarily be in there. If we're trying to create zoning laws or bylaws that reflect specifically 
this area that we want to be more of a developed versus a more res versus more residential. Even if there's residential, it's more apartment driven residential versus single family homes. Um, I would think that that would make sense to take those out. Um, well, on the same, but, but, but I'm not on the zoning board, so I no, no. And on the same on the same pathway. There was a I, I recall a lot of concern about primary building, secondary building, all residential. Mm -hmm. And right now that was applying to the broader district. So for example, if we, if the decision was to create a, a core, uh, which had a different density than the outer core, you could not allow that in the core. So for example, everything mixed use has to be within the mixed use building. There is no secondary, um, residential all building you know so there's though that's another consideration that could be i mean i think when we started out we thought of you know that the core properties wouldn't necessarily be looking to do some commercial in a secondary residential building um, from a market standpoint but the issue was raised but it could so if we think that the core would be better suited to be all strictly mixed use, then maybe there's where it says the core is mixed use. It's, it's commercial first floor and residential above, and that's it. There is no secondary residential buildings allowed. Or, so, or straight commercial, correct? Or, yeah, straight so, commercial. So let me, let me jump in real quick because it's my new fancy role of chair here. Yep. I, I'm pretty, if I'm, I'm looking at the agenda again, and it looks like we wanted to avoid talking about the actual individual article items tonight and focus on process, right? So if I think if I can bring the conversation back to the process, um, since we're an hour deep already, I'd like to try and do that. So if, just in, a, in an effort to recap mm -hmm. and not cut off the conversation, but so we already talked about the chairperson, then we wanted to talk about the advisory board meeting and the final report. So I think we've agreed that some combination of that we need to address the advisory board meetings and comments that they need to be included in some sort of a, a running um, memo of the committee's conversations, be that the discussion memo that I put out there, be that Josh's memo or some combination of the two. I, I think we're in agreement that that's the right thing to do is to start to write these things down and address them, right? So the, the third item is what is the list of concerns and criticisms so far, right? So if we agree on the fact that a document needs to happen, what, what do we do with that, Rich? In order to get a list of concerns and criticism from everybody's notes, can we issue a document and have everybody add to it? Like, how would we, and I don't want to take the meeting to do work, right? The, the meetings to make decisions not to do work. So yeah. We need to make a list of all of the concerns and criticisms we've heard so far. How do we go about doing that? So I, think, I think my first step would be to take the document that you already have prepared with the discussion points and blend it in with uh, what Josh has and I have, and then we can add to it. So by topic, you know, we can hit each one of the topics and then identify the source. Right. So if I if I took Josh's list and and then put it into my list, and sorry for the personal pronouns, yeah, and then send it to you, you would send it to the group and say, everybody, please add your your memory to this document, and it it will become the document that we use going forward. Yeah, it would be the yes, the list of concerns document. If you use a Google Doc and give everyone on the B one committee access to it, then if they type in a, a change or a concern or whatever, then it would automatically save as the new version. Like once you create it and then you send it to us, it, it'll ask you, do you want to give access to edit? And you would say yes. And then mm -hmm. it would say, here's your invitation to edit this document. And if you choose not to, you choose not to. And if you choose to, you can. And if you don't like the change that someone made, you can always you know, delete it out and revert back to the original. Um, you know, 
if, if that's how you, if you wanted to give everyone access, you could also just ask for everyone to, if you didn't want to do it in a Google Doc in that way, and you felt that would get too confusing for whoever is in charge of the master list, so to speak, mm -hmm. you could just ask everyone to email you back their concerns or concerns they've heard or concerns they have, or even if concerns they have that too much is being changed, however they feel about it, they could yep. email it back to you and then the one person in charge could make the edits. There's a couple, I'm just saying, there's a couple different ways that you could go about doing it. It just depends on how much access you wanna give everybody on the board to change the document. Um, and if you don't, then you just do it over email and keep it that way. So since I don't have a raise hand button um, as host, I'm just gonna jump in. Uh, this is Kevin Calcutt. So just to take a step back quickly, you know, over the course of the last six to eight weeks, we've been solely focused on getting feedback to be able to identify where gaps in understanding or in acceptable changes or appetite for changes exist so that we as a committee could take those that feedback and we could discuss amongst ourselves if we need to A, focus more on education to bridge those gaps or B, push forward because with what we've learned in all of these things um this is the best route to go and we've done our best to be able to provide everybody with as much information as we can or c we need to change course because what people are saying what we're hearing from the community makes sense and we need to find another alternative to be able to execute our core goal here um, i feel like in our discussions with advisory with the feedback list that uh aaron put together we have all of that to be able to make those, those kind of discussion decisions at this point um, I just don't want to see us get caught in another loop of gaining feedback from everybody for another two weeks, get back to group up again, and all of a sudden we're in April talking for the first time about how we're going to start moving forward as a committee on each of these individual items. And maybe that's what we're talking about here. We've already covered through, you know, what, what that looks like from a procedural standpoint, but uh, I just don't want to see us hit a cycle where we spend all this time getting a, yet another list going of the things that we're identifying as issues or gaps only to have more of them be introduced in April and then find ourselves kind of chasing our tail to get ahead of this stuff. I think at one point this committee has to sit down and say, we're going to go with option A for this issue, option B for this issue, option B for the next issue, and say, this is how we're going to move forward with our package, and then focus on getting that package out there and spending our cycles on explaining why that's the best thing for the group. My own perspective, please feel free to contest it. So Kevin, let me, let me jump in and this is Aaron. Um, I, I think if you, if you go back to the original calendar we sketched out, this, this meeting, March 23rd, week of, was supposed to be our, sec, our public meeting for the presentation of the, the MAPC report. At which point we were gonna say, all right, we've got all of our input on the report and the, the recommendations that we made a year ago, let's now digest that information and decide what we're gonna do with it. So I would, I would argue that we're somewhat on schedule, we just skipped the public meeting, right? So I think the next meeting, which is, is tentatively scheduled for the week of April 20th, was intended to be, all right, here's the items, here's the comments, what are we gonna do? Right, so I, I think the next I, the next meeting in April was really the one that was intended to be what you just suggested. I think if we if we have take take this report, I'm not sure whose is whose, but if we take one of these two lovely reports and merge them together and then send it out and just say, you know, last and final chance to add any concerns or recommendations that you don't already see here and then in April the April meeting we vote on those and then we work on drafting a final report that we present over the summer I mean unfortunately a lot of our our schedule was going to be you know doing presenting to different boards and with the coronavirus stuff that's going on I'm not sure everything's going to be on schedule I mean from what I understand, I think town meeting is going to be moved. So that puts things in a different category as far as when those boards are meeting um, in the first place. So, um, you know, however people want to move forward, I do think that it sh there should be a cutoff point for when you can add concerns and add. So, 
And I agreed, and I think that's what this next meeting is supposed to be. So if, if Rich and I work together and put together the first draft, or at this point, second draft of this list, we send it out, everybody provides feedback, we go into the April meeting with what we'll say are our collected, our collected comments from the various boards that we represent, that we've presented to, and the public, and we're going forward from there. Does that, that mm -hmm. seem like a reasonable approach? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can, can I define what go forward from there, me or actually the step right before that? Can we define that? Because we're going to collect all this input. And what I envision in my head is, you know, we have one line for both for building height. We identify what the concern was too high for most people. And then underneath that, we have options A, B, and C, I don't know, crafted by Rich or in collaboration with Josh that say, look, we can either reduce the building height to this, we can leave it as is and explain why it's the norm with these comparative communities and building pictures that show that it's not that bad. Or C, we can go through another avenue to be able to accommodate for the loss in volume that we're looking at. I, I, do, I would just like to see something that's more directed that we can discuss and decide on as opposed to a jumble of ideas and concerns that we're going to argue about. Yeah. Does that make sense or does that not make sense? You can tell me if uh, it doesn't make sense. I think that's a more efficient way to go about it. Yeah, I would say, um, Kevin, to that point, I think what we should do at the next meeting is we should identify the spokesperson for each item. And then we can go through a general conversation on the, the committee's updated feelings in each item. Those spokespeople could take responsibility for their items write down that conversation, and then each spokesperson could create a path forward, you know, for each agenda item uh, under a, a framework that's managed by the committee at large. Uh, very quickly, I know that we've been discussing a, an agenda item. We do have one resident that's attending. Um, I did want to, Aaron, unless you have a concern, give that individual the opportunity to provide a comment or question. All right, fine with me. Chris, anything you wanted to throw in there? Feel free to just say your name and your address and make your comment if you want to. I think they may just be listening. Yeah, agreed. All right, Susan, I see your hand up, go ahead. Okay, so what I was, um, uh, Aaron basically said exactly what I was thinking, but same along the same lines just wanted to do a for example for example we have seven warrant articles if at the next meeting after we've done the analysis over email it's been sent out everyone's concerns are in there you take warrant article one for example at the meeting we assign it to someone then we discuss hopefully no more than 10 15 minutes max per warrant article um, if you're, if you only focus on one at a time, hopefully some decisions can be made. And you say, like you were talking about, Heather's A, B, and C. We say, here's the feedback. Here's A, B, and C. How does everybody feel? What do we want to? How do we want to move forward? Pros and cons for each. We vote on it. That person, whoever's in charge of that, checks it off. And then hopefully at some point, we'll also be the one to write the warrant article for that to submit um, to set for town meeting in the fall. Um, and I think if you make it very, very concise, and this is the only one we're speaking about in this moment, and we're not moving off of this one until we've made a decision. And if we try to limit the time that we spend on each one, then hopefully we will be able to make some headway. Um, and of course, again, everyone's not going to agree, and we just have to go with what the majority feels and take our chances. And if it ends up being Along, along the same lines as the majority of the town, then we can call it a win. And if it ends up not being that way, then it doesn't pass. I mean, there's really not much else we can do other than just go with our gut and go with the recommendations that we've been given from MAPC and from the research that this own board does or committee does itself. Um, I think if, we're, if we can get to a concise way of taking each individual article, addressing those specific concerns one at a time, voting on that article, and then moving on, I think we'll start to make some headway. Agreed. Eileen or Devin or Janine, you got any thoughts? Not anymore. I think Susan articulated that very well. Uh, I, I, I like the idea of just concentrating on just one issue. 
and just trying to move. You know, I, I, I feel like we're kind of stalling out a little bit um, just with the way we've been going with this process. Um, and I just, I just want to keep it moving forward and just come to a conclusion on each issue one at a time. Right. So it sounds like we've got sort of general agreement on that process. So Rich and I will work to outline something for next month and we'll get some documents out. So I think one of the other documents we'll send out is this executive summary, which is the next item on the agenda list. I don't know if, if everybody's had a chance to look at it, but um, I, I think it does a pretty good job of summarizing the articles and some of the history associated with them. So um, yeah. take a look at it. I don't know that we need to, unless anybody has comments they want to share tonight, maybe we can just, we can make it one of the other documents that gets issued and sent out as well. Um, Hey, Aaron, it looks like our resident attendees are uh, connected through audio if we want to let them comment before we move on. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time to include us in this. Uh, I would like to say that I think I agree with uh, your point and Devin's point of uh, I would like to see some progress. I would like to see some movement forward. Uh, I thought your idea of sort of laying it out of uh, these are the objections. Uh, a, B, and C are the solutions. What are we going to decide as a group? Uh, I'd like to see some work. I'd like to see this move forward. Uh, I, I, I think pushing this off yet again uh, isn't helpful. Right. So I guess that. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. That that being said. Um, should we take the next item is the schedule. Should we take a look at the schedule again and see if anybody wants to make any changes to it? Um, you know, it, it sounds to me like we're in general agreement that a public meeting for a presentation of the MAPC report no longer seems appropriate. Um, maybe I'll talk to Rich about issuing the report again publicly so that it's back out there or, or maybe we can print a hard copy and send it to the library or whatnot, but to, to make sure that report is out there. Um, the library being closed, I think that's probably not, I think if, I think if I, I did not know that it had been posted since we were met with, when we met last time with the advisory board, it had not been posted. And I don't monitor the town pages, ex, you know, religiously, but I do keep an eye out on the Norfolk page and on the town page, and I have not seen anyone mention that it had been posted, so I was unaware that it was out there. So I think if we can just make it public, but make it public and say, here's the report, but with a blurb that says, this is not necessarily how the B1 committee is going to move forward, but this is what we're using as a, a resource. Um, and I think that would be a, a, a good thing. I mean, having a public meeting right now seems pointless because you know we might get two people who are gonna join a Zoom meeting and maybe they will speak and maybe they won't. So I'm not necessarily sure that we should sit through another M, um, MAPC report, but I think we should definitely make sure that everyone knows that it has been posted and has the link on where to access it. I agree. I thought... Go ahead, Eileen. Wasn't me. Oh, oh it was me. Uh, Janine, I previously we had talked about when, so I know it was the report was posted on the site, maybe not many people saw it or knew about that, but I thought we had talked about when we're ready to draw attention to the fact that it has been posted, putting like an executive summary or a cover letter page. I, I thought that was the genesis of some of these other documents. Did we want to did I misremember that? You I did not, Janine. Uh, like sort of Rich, do you, do you, is there an update on the cover letter? I don't, did it get posted with the report? I know we never really discussed it as a group. No, that was, right, that was the, from a procedural, yeah, the group never discussed, they talked about the cover letter, but never really finalized discussion of a cover letter to post it out, so we could. All right. So I, I would make this proposal. So I, I had penned a cover letter, Janine, and group. Um, I don't know that it ever went to the group. So let's, well, 
we'll add it to the list of documents to circulate to the group and everybody get a, give everybody a chance to uh, take a look at it, suggest edits, and then we'll get it posted with the report. I, I am more comfortable with that. I just think, especially given the time that has passed since this was more of a public discussion, people might just be confused about the difference between MAPC issuing a report versus we're not making recommendations yet. Yeah. Well, it's a good excuse to reissue the report, I guess. Either way. I think if we don't want to send people, like Janine was saying, if we don't want to send people into a panic, we need to make sure that they are aware that it's a resource for us to use moving forward, but it is not necessarily the exact recommendations that this committee will make at town meeting, that that is still being worked on um, and to stay tuned. I think if, if you just put it out there with a, you know, without explicitly saying that we we'll, might get some, mm -hmm some negative feedback that you know isn't necessarily warranted so. so i can work with aaron on a cover letter that could hit on those points too kevin as as part of the zoom platform can you share your desktop yes you absolutely can um i'm thinking that there would be the ability for me to be able to assign presentership to an individual participant let's see are you looking to do that right now or just in the future uh i was a more of a curiosity question click share screen then it should request it to the host to give you access if you see it down the bottom it's like a green it could be in the middle of your bottom panel but i can't force somebody to be no, no, I think if I want to take control from you, I can push that button and right. Disabled oh, right the now. share the share screen button. I see now. I had to expand to get it, but yeah. Okay. All right, that's good to know. And then that should record as well in the the Zoom recording. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. The so one thing I've learned from tonight's Zoom meeting is there's going to be a lot of work between now and potentially next Wednesday night to try to pull off a zoning board of appeals meeting in this platform with the, I'm, I'm a, little, a little nervous, Devin, just to, say, to be honest with you. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, All right. So I think, I think Rich and I have some homework to get updated documents out to everybody in order to be, uh, to have marching orders ready for the April meeting as recommended by both this group and the public. Um, I think we can, we can get there. I think a lot of it started uh, assuming everybody reads it, comments on it, gets the comments back to Rich, we should be in a good place for the April meeting. Um, do we need to schedule the April meeting or is that something we should do outside the group, Rich? Right, right now, well, we have on the calendar, it's April 20th. And I'm, I'm assuming many people will probably be around now. <laughs> oh, good. Cool. Get a captured audience. <laughs> I've, uh, so, and I'm pretty confident it's going to be a, uh, another remote meeting. Let's think positive, Rich. Yeah, that's <laughs> not optimistic right there, Rich. Come on. That's far well, enough if away. To the fire, if you listen to the fire chief, you won't be so optimistic. But anyway, that's a side note. All right, so April 20th until further notice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so Devin, can we, we I'm sorry, Eric, about, can we just reiterate what we're coming into April 20th with? What, what are we gonna have in front of us on April 20th? Yes, we're gonna have comments on the executive summary. We're gonna have comments on the discussion points. We're gonna have comments on the schedule. We're going to have comments on the cover letter for the MAPC report in the April 20th meeting. Uh, we are going to discuss the individual articles and either assign volunteer or vote for spokes people for each article. When all of these things are sent out, can we resend out the warrants, even though they're old and they're going to be reworded and everything? If we could just have them 
in, if I could have them in front of me, I know that I could make notes and I would be able to see it and see what changes need to be made in the way that it was worded before. Okay. And since I wasn't on the committee, so, I didn't have those the first time. So I, I don't have access to them. Rich, what I was alluding to there, this is Kevin again, I'm sorry, um, was it would make be beneficial to structure our agenda to identify what items are up for discussion and what items are up for action, um, just so we could identify where our decision points are being placed um, and what's contributing, contributing to them. Okay. All right. Um, Devin, we had at one point talked and you might be need to be needing to be replaced on the board. Has that gone anywhere? Well, I'm uh, given the current status of the world, I'm not really going anywhere right now. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> uh, Rich, what else do we have on the agenda tonight? Captured it all first. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to work on the Do we want to discuss the schedule moving forward, or we're just going to focus on April? Because the B one, uh, the May meeting was us presenting to the planning board or working with the planning board. I'm not sure if you want to get that on the planning board schedule, if that is the case, because that would mean that if we're not back to in person meetings by May, that we would need to make sure that they are available for a Zoom meeting in May. It, I, just based on the schedule, I have no, you know, preference either way. I'm just saying that we should make sure that we're on their schedule or they're on ours, if that's what we still want to do. Susan, I think you might be referencing an older schedule. I'm, this is what was sent to me in t today's email. It oh. says April 2020, May 2020. May 2020 is the working committee meeting with the planning board to decide and recommend solutions to finalize the zoning requirements. All right. There was there. That's my schedule. I had put together a potential schedule because I was not aware that the committee had prepared one at the last meeting. So this schedule that Susan's referring to is based upon the scope of work which we had outlined to uh, to extend our funding with mass housing. So that's. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I will just toss that one into the garbage. <laughs> Well, that being said, I, th I think before we issue this, the, the updated calendar, Rich and I will need to incorporate Josh's thoughts in this. Um, but that's a good transition to, I didn't, we kind of let Josh start the meeting and then we cut him out of the conversation. And I, Josh, having sat there and listened patiently to all of us, is there anything you want to add to the conversation this evening? I, I think I would just reiterate a little bit of what I started with, and which I think uh, Kevin picked up on nicely. But I do think that a very um, a document which specifically lays out the concerns with each of the warrant language pieces we had previously, the possible solutions or changes, and then have the committee make decisions around that document, I think is a very uh, logical and fine path forward. Uh, just, I was looking, comparing the potential schedule that I had put together, which Susan just dropped in the trash can, um, <laughs> but it, it actually isn't, it doesn't have too many uh, inconsistencies with the schedule that you all had put together. So I think they do align pretty well, um, and we can, you know, in light of everything that's going on in the world, keep an eye on where we think this is headed. But I think it's a sound next step, that, that sort of matrix based decision tree is, is a really good one that we can get help support you all getting that put together. All right. Uh, I guess with, uh, with that, I'll make one last trip around the room to see if anybody has any comments before we entertain a motion to adjourn. No, um, I'll start with Rich. Um, I, I don't have any comments at the moment. Eileen? Um, I guess my only comment would be that, I, and I did miss a lot of the advisory board meeting because I had to work on Wednesday night that night, um, is that my impression is that some of the more vocal opponents um, 
of what we're doing is kind of is obviously based on where they live, where they purchased a home, you know, the zoning that their home is in, and and whether or not they're recruiting their neighbors or friends to be more oppositional in everything that we're doing. Does that make sense? Do, does, well, do we are, people get a we, sense we are the two. We are. I just want to. This is Martha Henry. We, you're talking about us. Not uh, necessarily. No, not at all. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're the vocal ones, which we're fine with. Um, but we're, we're not like creating an opposition. We're actually really in favor of development in the downtown area. Um, we are just, there are several concerns that have been raised and we're looking forward to this committee setting a clear path forward with recommendations that takes those concerns into consideration and respond to them with logical answers, which have not been presented yet. So we really look forward to both Kevin and Josh's plan of a real matrix that lays out how, how the recommendation came about, what are some of the issues that were raised, what are the options moving forward, and then we look forward to seeing what this committee does. I, do, I really don't appreciate this keep getting twisted that Chris and I are creating some opposition when quite frankly, of all the people in town, we're trying to participate. We're even joining you when we all have so much going on on a Zoom meeting. So it would and be I, nice yeah, if that I comment could that. be that comment could be put aside and we focus on the actual work at hand. I apologize. I do not mean any disrespect, and I appreciate your participation. Apparently, because you are the only people that are participating. So thank you for that. But it was just an observation that I felt needed to be. I needed to make. The most of the people on the advisory board don't, as far as I know, I think I might be the only one who lives close to the B1 area. Um, most of the people that I know of where they live, live, I mean, Norfolk's only 10, <laughs> what, eight square miles. So I guess in that theory, everyone lives close to the B1 area, but, um, you know, two of them live in the Noon Hill area. Um, one of them lives off of Boardman, and the other one, one of the other ones lives over off of Maple. So I'm not sure if that's, if I would consider them necessarily close. I don't know where some of them live. Um, There's another maybe one there where, there. Yeah, there may be some that I just don't know where they live. I mean, we're not all friends, uh, friends outside of the advisory board. I mean, you know what I'm saying, like where we, we don't hang out at each other's houses. So I'm not really aware of that, but I know the ones who are most, um, I was not aware, let's put it this way. I am not aware of anyone who lives close enough to the B1 area to be upset about it for themselves. Okay. Um, that right, well, being said, again, I don't know where every single person on the advisory board lives. I don't. All right, well, let's, let's keep moving on here with Devin. You got anything you want to close with? No, I'm all set. All right. Janine? I'm good. Thank you. Susan? I'm good. Kevin? Um, I'll just reiterate the point that, you know, this committee was put together to bring in a range of experiences and backgrounds to be able to contribute to a common goal of putting forth to the community an alternative to be able to achieve some of the goals listed in our master plan. Um, this committee was never intended to go through the technical research and data analysis that's associated with the effectiveness of some of these measures. Uh, we were meant to you know, receive them, have them be presented to us by the experts and professionals, and then be able to make a judgment call based on everything that we've learned. I think that the path that we're on right now gets us to that point. I think that by having these issues and these concerns that have been laid out previously, identified and clearly listed along with some suggested paths forward uh, comprised by, you know, Rich and Josh uh, will help us be able to make those kinds of decisions and move forward with a package that I think we can all get behind and then start to get the rest of the community behind as well. So looking forward to that. Thanks, Kevin. Ed? I, I'm all set. I'm, I'm glad we're going, just on this comment, I, I'm glad we're going back to the executive summary rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. We, we've done a lot of work and we should build on what we've already done. Josh, anything you want to throw out there? I'm good. Thank, thank you all for continuing the effort to keep this going. All right. Motion to adjourn. Uh, hold on. Chris and Martha, anything else you'd like to throw in there? No, thanks for uh, including us and sending along the password. It would be great uh, when we're back in regular 
like to have a robust discussion with more people from the public so that everybody understands come that meeting what they're voting for and the benefits it has to the town ahead of the meeting ahead of the meeting Absolutely. thank you for your work and right. thank you for being our first resident guinea pig for uh, zoom meeting <laughs> yeah there's lots of etiquette in video conferencing we'll all, we'll, <laughs> we're all learning Evan, it's your meeting so you have to end it Ooh, what? Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. second. There is a second. Oh, we have to do a roll call vote to adjourn. Kevin Calcutt, aye. <laughs> Eileen Kevin, Siegel. Aye. Good night, everybody. Aye. Janine DeBeck. She said aye. Kevin Howe. Aye. Susan Klein. Aye. Aaron Hunt. Aye. Ed Haddad. Aye. Thank you for entertaining my ridiculous processes, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>